Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So over the past few videos, I have been asking you guys what games you would like to see tested on the brand new Vulcan backend in a CMU 1.16.0 work in progress. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the most popular games that all of you guys have requested, including Xenoblade Chronicles X, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Splatoon, Mario Kart 8, and many more. If I haven't covered any of your favourite games in this video, please let me know down below in a comment, and as I've done in this video, I will test those games out for you absolutely no problem. That is, of course, once we get a brand new CMU work in progress Vulcan version. Before we get started, I want to give a massive thank you to the sponsor of this video, Amino. As I announced in a previous video of mine, I am now creating my very own stories over on the Amino platform, just like this one where I showcased me fixing and upgrading my streaming and recording PC. I find Amino really cool because it allows me to upload much shorter videos to show you guys a kind of behind the scenes of what goes on at BSOD Gaming, and in the next few days I have some really funny videos I'm going to be uploading of some stuff I have been doing behind the scenes. To follow me and check out all of my stories, all you have to do is download the app, hit the search panel at the very top, head across to the users panel and into the keyword link or amino ID panel, simply type BSOD Gaming. From here, all you have to do is head to my page, then hit the follow button and also make sure to hit the enable notifications so that you get notified whenever I upload a new story. Feel free to leave me a comment on any of my existing stories or on my wall and let me know what kind of behind the scenes content you would like to see. For now, let's jump straight back into this video and take a look at CMU Vulcan compatibility. First up, we have Xenoblade Chronicles X, and while we have seen dramatic improvements in the rendering of this game, and its stability is much better than we've seen on Vulcan before, it still unfortunately has these weird white vertex explosions as you move around the game world on both Nvidia and AMD GPUs. While I wouldn't call it a game-breaking bug or a bug that makes it unplayable, it is rather annoying and is going to have to be fixed before I can test or play this game any further. Next up we have Super Smash Bros 4 and on both my AMD RX 580 and my GTX 1060, this game was able to attain maximum performance on the Vulcan backend with minimal graphical issues. Smash is one of those tricky titles to test on Vulkan, especially so due to the fact that we do not currently have shader caches, so to properly test the game for performance, it requires you to play the game quite extensively in order to accurately gauge how it's working. Having tested this with AMD and Nvidia GPUs, I can say that it works absolutely flawlessly at full speed on every single arena. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test any Intel iGPUs in this game because their Windows driver is still missing the extension for transform feedbacks. Once that gets added to their driver, and it should be any day now, or once the CMU devs are able to implement some kind of a workaround to get this going, I will be able to properly test games on iGPUs on the Vulcan backend for CMU. Our next game is Bayonetta 2, and thanks to all of the improvements moving from a work in progress 5 to work in progress Vulcan 7, this game now goes in game, renders almost perfectly without any flickering at all, and also is running at a full 60 frames per second on both Nvidia and AMD GPUs. One thing I would like to note is the fact that this game and a few others seem to actually have some kind of weird VRAM leak, which after playing for about an hour or so will cause your game to crash. This issue has been reported to the CMU developers, so hopefully it will be fixed in a future work in progress release. Regardless, it's pretty damn cool to have a Bayonetta 2 now working and at least semi-functional on the Vulcan backend, and it can only get better from here. Our next title for testing is Mario Kart 8, and the gameplay footage you are currently watching right now is of it running on an NVIDIA GPU, my GTX 1060. Unfortunately, a very similar bug happens on AMD GPUs. Instead of the color being pink or purple, however, it's just going to be white or red. There are a few tracks that are rendered very well without this weird pink, white or red hue, but unfortunately in all of the tracks they are going to be suffering from the exact same weird square shadow issues you can see happening in gameplay right now. 
Several games are in fact affected by this same strange square shadow issue, like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Smash Bros and obviously Mario Kart, so hopefully once they fix it in one of those titles it will be fixed for all of them. Performance wise, on both AMD and Nvidia GPUs it ran at full speed at all times regardless of the game mode I played and regardless of how many players were in that game mode, so that is definitely great news for all CMU users. Moving on to our next game for testing, let's take a look at Splatoon where we have seen significant rendering improvements as well as fixes to the swimming in paint which now is fully functional on the Vulcan backend. Now there are some rendering issues with the ink in pretty much all of the levels, like you can see just here in front of my inkling, it is not properly rendered, it's kind of smeared instead of being fully solid like it's meant to be. And similarly to Mario Kart 8, you can see this game also suffers from that strange square shadow issue. Another thing that happens in Splatoon is if you transition between two areas, your graphics are going to get really distorted and really overexposed just like this. And regardless of how many times I swapped back and forth between two zones, it didn't fix my graphics, it only got worse if anything. Hopefully this issue is going to be fixed in a future release. Next up we have The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and similarly to what we saw on older builds, this game is now also fully functional and rendered very well on both AMD and Nvidia GPUs. However, in this latest release there have been several fixes to some texture corruptions and in the time I was testing on Nvidia and AMD I didn't get any stability based crashes like I was seeing in Bayonetta 2. Now there are still some rendering issues like you can very obviously see in the bottom left hand corner on the minimap, so hopefully these can be ironed out in future Vulcan releases. Next up we're going to take a look at a game that a lot of you actually requested in my past few videos, Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water. While this game does indeed boot on the new Vulcan builds, it unfortunately crashes just before it actually goes in game or renders any graphics. This same crash happened to me on both Nvidia and AMD GPUs, so at this point in time there's not too much point in looking at this game further since it's unbootable into gameplay. Next up we're going to take a look at The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD and thanks to the optimizations and improvements we saw between Work in Progress 5 and the current Work in Progress 7, the majority of the graphical issues including the weird banding shadows are now completely fixed on both Intel, AMD and Nvidia GPUs. Since Wind Waker is quite an expansive and large game, I haven't had too much time to test with it, maybe about 3 or 4 hours across all GPU vendors, but I didn't encounter any stability or performance issues in any of my time testing, so this game seems like it's in a very good shape on Vulcan. Our second last game for testing in this video is another very highly requested game, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. This is yet another title on the CMU Vulcan backend that functions really, really well on both AMD and Nvidia GPUs, even though oddly enough when I booted it for the first time on my RX 580 I had this weird bloom issue in practically all of the levels, but upon subsequent loadings it didn't happen anymore, so to be honest I'm not really too sure what was happening there. Performance wise on both GPU vendors it maintained a practically locked 60 frames per second at all times when not caching shaders. Unfortunately this game similarly to Bayonetta 2 had some fairly significant stability issues meaning I was only able to do about 5 or 6 fights in a row before the game crashed on both AMD and Nvidia. Hopefully this title will be fixed sooner rather than later, especially so considering the amount of people that requested it for testing in this video. Let's now move on to our final game, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Again, in the transition from Work in Progress 5 to Work in Progress 7, Breath of the Wild has seen a small performance uplift on both Nvidia and AMD GPUs and thankfully the crashing issues that AMD GPU users were experiencing when cutting down trees, doing a sword smash with any weapon or destroying any of the small ancient guardians inside of shrines have now been completely fixed. For both AMD and Nvidia users they have also completely solved the issue where your game would just flat out crash or fail to boot if you had the setting GX2 draw done disabled. Many people leave this option disabled as it drastically improves the performance in this and many games on the emulator, so thankfully this is now completely solved. 
In respect to rendering and graphical issues, there are still quite a few, especially in reference to shadowing, but from version to version you can see that it is gradually getting better, so hopefully these shadow issues will be solved in a work in progress release soon. On top of this, I also hope that they implement a graphics pack support since playing games at 720p when your computer is capable of much higher resolutions is a bit of a pain in the ass, but I can completely understand why they want to get Vulkan stable and working first and foremost, and then at the end of its development, or its stable development at least, they can then implement things like resolution graphics packs and shader caches. Now, regardless of any of the issues we have seen, I don't think anyone expected Vulcan to be this stable or rendering this well this early in its development, so massive praise should really be given to Simi's developers, great job on Vulcan so far guys. That's pretty much it for all of the testing I did for this video. As I said at the start, if there are any games that you would like to see me further test, please let me know down below in a comment, and as always if I have access to that game, or if I can buy it for cheap, I will test it for you absolutely in no problem at all. Again, at the end of this video, I want to give another massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely awesome helping to pay for things like electricity bills, internet bills, water bills, games that I need for testing in videos just like this. So to all of my past and present supporters, thank you guys very much. If anyone out there would like to help with the day-to-day -day running of BSOD Gaming, please consider heading to the Patreon link down in this video's description and pledging to support. These donations, as I always say, are absolutely not required to get help from me here on YouTube or over on my Discord, but to everyone who has chosen in the past or chooses in future to support, thank you guys very much. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like down below. Not only does this help with the visibility of this video, but also of my YouTube channel as a whole. If you liked what you saw in this video, also you should consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon in order to stay as update as possible on all of my video releases. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching this video, have a great day and I will see you in the next one.